Hey everybody, welcome into the scoreboard. I am your host, Brigham Harris. Today is Tuesday, December 14th. A nice, beautiful day here in Park City. Nice blue skies, a little bit of cloud cover, but don't you worry, all those ski bums out there, we do have a lot of snow coming our way, which is very good news. Uh, if you are any sort of park rat or slalom skier, whatever you like, backcountry, we are getting dumped on here with some snow in the next couple of days, so very good news. Also, good news is that we won't have to be playing any sports out in the uh, snowfall. We are still in the heart of basketball, wrestling, swimming uh, season right now, so it's a, a perfect time to get all that uh, nice snow. As for what we are expecting this week, we got a lot of basketball still, and in this episode, we're going to be doing basketball interviews with coaches and players, giving you some stats and things like that. As for last weekend, we can talk a little bit about how our local schools did, the North and South Summits, as well as Wasatch and Park City High Schools. Like I said, lots of basketball. We're in swimming and wrestling season, so uh, let's let's dive right into it. As we take a look at Park City High School first, the boys basketball team over the weekend uh, had had a nice 3-0 and start and then dropped a, a game uh, in their loss against Logan on Friday. Pretty close game, 8-point loss. Bork Oskisthorpe, though, however, 24 points. Led the team in points, in scoring. Uh, great job to him. And as for the girls team, they also started out 3-0, lost their last three. However, they were carried by Ava Kimchi in a double overtime loss against Wasatch. She had 25 points. They're looking to bounce back later this week. As for Wasatch, we head down to Heber. Girls basketball now 2-3 and three on the year. That uh, double overtime win at Park City. And Chiara Serra with 28 points. Just topped Ava Kimchi 25. As for the boys team, they also struggled a little bit at the uh, Sky Ridge Tournament, went 0-3. Not necessarily the start that they're looking for to the season. After that great comeback win against Harriman, they have uh, skidded a little bit to a, a bit of a plateau, and the coach uh, of Wasatch Boys Basketball caught up with our own field correspondent, Brent Martindale, to talk about his hopes for the rest of the season. You know, not, like I said, the great start that they were hoping for, but region has not even started yet for this 5A team. The Wasps really looking to bounce back uh, and get some wins under their belts. We'll keep you updated on all of that 5A action in Park City and Wasatch. Now, as we head a little bit more to the north and a uh, smaller classification, girls basketball at North Summit in Colville, two and three on the year. They went one and two at the Preston Tournament. They play the Leighton Christian Eagles tonight at North Summit. Now, again, we talk about those three games at that Preston Idaho tournament, they are going without their leading scorer, Marcy Richens, who is averaging 21 points a game. However, she just played the first two, that being uh, November 30th against Juab, and then on the fourth, so just a week later. But she has been out these last three games, didn't play at all the Preston tournament. We'll be catching up with her and some of her teammates later on this week about the North Summit uh, uh, Braves and how they're looking to bounce back from those losses. The boys team, also very exciting basketball content coming out of Colville. The boys team is 2-5, and 85-80 to 80 loss on Saturday, but get this, Trey Pace scored an astounding 34 points in that loss. He also gathered 11 rebounds, and his uh, his counterpart, Adam Winters, scored 20 points and 7 rebounds. So it was a long night for those two. Trey Pace leading the 2A class with 23 points per game, and that's a consistent over seven games. So he has been absolutely shooting the lights out of every gym he is entering. We are actually talking to him today. Blake O'Rulian gets to sit down with him, kind of pick his brain about the season, and where in the world is this shooting come from? The standout is uh, really doing great things for the Braves up there. We're excited to bring that interview to you in just a few minutes. Now, as we round things out for our last weekend in sports, South Summit boys basketball now two and four on the year, lost in a nail biter at Manti, 60 to 57. They'll look to bounce back also this week. And girls basketball, they actually haven't played in 10 days. They'll have their first game this week. They are two and three on the year. We wish the Wildcats the best of luck this week. There it goes. There you go, rounding out the weekend with a whole lot of basketball, and we are going to be right back here on the scoreboard. Don't go anywhere. We have lots of interviews with our coaches, basketball players. It's really just a, a hoops episode here on the scoreboard, so don't go anywhere. We are going to be right back. Thanks for tuning in right here on the scoreboard. The scoreboard is proudly sponsored by Andrea Cox Mortgage. Welcome to First Rate Mortgage. My name's James and I've been in the market for mortgages several times over the years, so I've gone through the process with different people. And uh, when I met Andrea, she explained to me why my current loans were subpar and how she could get better loans with better rates. If I had to describe 
Andrea, in one word, I think I would use the word passionate. She is very passionate about what she does and getting the right solutions for her clients, uh, and that made her an absolute pleasure to work with. Hi, I'm Andrea Cox. You can reach me at 435-631-9262. Call me, text me, or you can reach me on my website, andreacoxmortgage.com. It starts small. A celebration of every detail. A smile, a singular passion. It's the smallest of details that add up to big differences. Every single day, every little moment, it starts here. And hello, everybody. Welcome back to the scoreboard. I am your host, Brigham Harris. Today is Tuesday, the 14th of December, and we have got a basketball jam-packed episode for you today. Now, our own Brent Martindale, field correspondent, got to catch up with Coach James Ballstead out there at Wasatch High School, coach of the boys' basketball team. We got to learn a little bit about their season. Right now, 1-6, not necessarily the start that they're looking for after they got a great comeback win against a great Harriman team last week. They lost a few games uh, on the road at the Sky Ridge Tournament. They're looking to bounce back this week. Uh, Brent is sitting down with Coach. Hey, everybody. We are with James Ballstead, the head basketball coach at Wasatch High School, the boys basketball team coach. Thanks for joining us. And it's going to be great to talk about a great win uh, over Harriman. But first, let's talk about your early season. You've been playing some really tough teams. Coach, give us an idea where you're at and where, uh, you know, how the guys are doing. You know, they seem to be doing okay. This, uh, the win the other night was great for morale and winning is always nice. Um, <laughs> we, we have played some tough teams. We have a couple tough losses. I think, I think we played Orem great. We played Real, you know, RSL really close, um, except for one quarter. And, and then Olympus, we just, we played poorly. And they played great. They're a really good team. And so I think it, right. what's good is that the things that we're not doing um, are fixable. Um, a lot of it is, you know, is so I think it's all fixable. But I love to be tested by good teams. Sometimes in, when you're not playing those teams that will expose your weaknesses, it's hard to correct those weaknesses because you don't, the boys don't see them and it's harder to see them as a coach when you don't do that. So that I like to do that. I hate to lose, but I, Right now, or preseason, to me, winning is um, more than scoring more points than the other team. There's some good things that we're getting out of these games. So that's that's, that's where we're at. That's probably uh, where the hours and hours of videotape comes in, right? The, uh, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> not getting any sleep at night. Yeah. So Yes, that's right. Well, and you mentioned the teams you played, all tough. I mean, the Real team's one of the top teams in the state. Yeah. Uh, from what we understand and and uh, so well let's jump right into this Harriman game then Harriman is a 6A school so you're not afraid to jump in against the tough teams um let's talk you know we talked a little bit before the interview here a tale of two halves let's let's just go right into it let's first let me mention the final score the final score Wasatch 48 Harriman 43 but let's look at the halftime score uh, going into half. Harriman's up 26-15. What are you doing go at, at that point talking to the guys and what was it like in the uh, locker room at halftime? <laughs> well, we, we sat outside as coaches and talked a little bit before we walked in the locker room. I like the guys to talk about it themselves. They're the ones out on the court playing. Right. They're smart. They see things. They know what, what can happen. And, and so... They had some things figured out when we came in the locker room. I think the biggest thing um, for us, and I had talked to them before the game and I reminded them again at halftime that that we weren't stressed about winning that game. We were stressed. I, I, I want to be stressed about playing well, right? Competing every possession. We needed to walk out in that third quarter. We had the last three games, we've had horrible third quarters. Mm -hmm. We didn't talk about that at all in the locker room at, at Harriman and, and uh, certainly we came out and turned around but our focus was just on our effort our effort was poor in the first half I thought we didn't share the ball we didn't uh, we'd shot poorly 
Um, and a lot of that comes from not sharing the ball. You're taking tough shots. When I look at our shooting percentages in that first half, I look at our turnover percentages. You know, we, we had, I think it was 12 turnovers the first half, and we had two in the second half. That's a big deal. And, I, and our shooting percentage dramatically increased in, in the second half because we started taking better shots. And so, uh, again, at halftime, even then, it all seemed fixable, and, and the boys came out and played great in that third and fourth quarter. So what was uh, Harriman doing? I mean, obviously, you just mentioned the fact that what was in your control, 12 turnovers, is huge. Was there anything that Harriman was doing in the first half that was maybe different in causing those type of turnovers? You know, I didn't. I didn't think so. They're long and athletic, so being there, they were on the court. They that helped it. Um, they're a good team, um, but I. It, it was more our decision. We were driving to the middle too much. We were putting the ball on the ground way too much without passing it. We weren't cutting the way we needed to cut. We were forcing things. We had guys going one on three, one on four, um, a lot of little footwork things, which was funny. We'd worked on some of that stuff the day before in practice and. And uh, I, I think Tucker, when his travel, he's coming down the court. I'm like, man, you got just like yesterday. You got to put the, you got to dribble before you, <laughs> before you move. And he said, Coach, I didn't dribble. I said, exactly. That's why it was a travel. <laughs> anyway, it was good. They, I, I think there, a lot of it came from our decisions. And when you get panicked and, and you want to score, then you start to make poor decisions when you, and and you think you can do it all. And in, in when you get down, sometimes the kids think, oh. We can do this all in, in one play. That was actually a, a point when I walked into the locker room, that they were finishing up the discussion of, I think it was even Tucker, Tucker, one of the captains said, guys, th we're not coming back in one possession. So let's take a possession at a time. And, and we like to uh, um, slice it up that way. And so huh. that's what they did. I mean, we didn't, we didn't catch back up until the fourth quarter. Right, but we but we chipped away at it, and I thought they did a great job of that in the third quarter. Tucker Engelbright is who you're referring to, and right. Tucker uh, led uh, with 10 points and seven rebounds in your game. Robbie Glenn also contributing 10 points. So what turned it around in the in the second half? You come out and you you don't mention anything about the previous third quarter droughts, but you yeah. come out. What changes? Um, effort, I think, and focus. But again, part of that message we told the boys, like, hey, we're not stressed about winning this game. I told them that, that Herman was more stressed about winning than us um, because we're playing a long game. We want to be, we want to be peaking when, when it's true. We haven't even put in a lot of our things yet that we okay. that we want to put in. Um, but I think that focus again, moving the ball, focusing on individual possessions happened, and we shared the ball. I mean, our assists um dr dramatically increased that second half our field goal percentage went up but we were taking better shots we we moved the ball really well i think that's a that's a big deal i think we had um i'm looking at my i think we had nine assists in that second half yes compared to two in the first half right i mean th right. those things make a difference when you're sharing the ball brent thank you so much a lot of exciting things going on down there and on the second half of that interview coming at you here in just a couple minutes don't go anywhere we'll be right back on the scoreboard Join the Salt Lake City Mission's Season of Hope. We are preparing to feed the hungry and homeless this holiday season. Help us collect the large amount of food, clothing, blankets, and hygiene products we need to make a difference in lives of people in need. You can help by donating frozen turkeys, ham, roast, holiday food items, new and used winter clothes and shoes, blankets, children's toys, men and women's hygiene items, and household goods. Donate now at saltlakecitymission.org. Hey everybody, welcome back to the scoreboard. Now, as promised, we are going to send it right back over to our field correspondent, Brent Martindale. He is sitting down with Coach James Ballstead at Wasatch High. And also beating them in the assists category. They Correct. didn't have as many assists. Right. So now uh, you score 34 points in the second half um, and a lot of those in the fourth quarter. Uh, frustration, Harriman showing a little frustration. I saw some clips. Um, you guys hitting threes at the right time. It just seemed Correct. like your timing was right. Uh, I'm looking at your stats, five three-pointers, and I believe four of those in the second half. Is that, that correct? That, that's exactly right. And that was one of the things we weren't as concerned about as well. Have 
when we got good shots, we took a couple really good shots in the first half. Not a lot. Some of, most of them were forced. But when we were taking shots, they weren't falling down. And we have some really good shooters. I mean, we, I'm not concerned when it's not going in with some of these guys because I know it's going to. I, Robbie Glenn had hit some huge shots in that second half. Yeah. Robbie doesn't take a ton, but when he takes them, they're going in. I mean, he he High he, percentage. he um, makes some good decisions that way. And most point guards, that's why he's running the point. But his uh, shooting percentage was high that ga game, and he hit some big shots for us. So now five guys with seven or more points, two with 10, and eight different guys scoring from your bench. That's got to be a, a, a pretty good uh, assortment of scoring, in your view. It is, and I, and I think you know our offense plays lends itself to that. Um, we 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 have some guys. Our, our offensive velocity is take the right shots, and in the second part, that is have the right guys taking the right shots. And when we need to get a shot, we'll get it in the hands of a couple of those guys. But honestly. Any one of those guys, they, they're learning where their shots are. And I think against Real, we had 11 guys score. And we scored 80 points in that game. And, and it, we weren't emptying the bench in that game. We just, we, it was a fast paced game. And guys were playing after Harriman, we were talking as coaches and I laughed. I mean, I, I looked down the, it's not funny, I guess, but I looked down that bench and we have guys on that bench that could easily be in that game and will be, right? I mean, we have three games this weekend, today, tomorrow, right. and Saturday, more guys are going to get some time to we need to manage that a little bit better over three games. But we've got guys that can score and can contribute um, on the bench. So I, I'm excited about our depth. So once again, final score uh, over Harriman, 6A Harriman, 48-43, uh, easily, and it is your first win of the season, but easily the best moment of the season so far. But like you mentioned, highlights from those other games of tough games. So let's go one more time. You've already talked a little bit about this, this upcoming tournament at Sky Ridge. Mm -hmm. Holy smokes, you have uh, some of the best teams in the state. We do another <laughs> another uh, tournament, I guess. I, again, we at Sky Ridge is, I think what, they're ranked fourth or something in 6A. And Jeff you get Garner's, them first. Yes, Jeff Garner's a phenomenal coach. He is, they run their systems really well. So we expect, a, a, you know, lots of different sets. Um, they've got, I know a couple of the kids on the team, Bryson um, Bailey, throw Bailey's kid. He's about six, oh. nine. So he's big kid, lanky, strong. Um, and then uh, Nick Holland, their point guard is a really great point. Guard. He's fast, he's small, fast, and can shoot the ball. And so we'll have a tough time but I'm excited about the matchup. I, I, I'm excited to go and get a win to Sky Ridge. I, don't, I saw somebody's tweet recently, Brad James over at the radio station, <laughs> tweeted that we're 0-5 historically against Sky Ridge. So it's time for a win. I didn't know that. And frankly, not overly concerned about that. But <laughs> I thought it was an interesting stat. But uh, it should be a good game tonight. They're, they're, they're quick. They like to get up the court. It'll be a great test for our guys. And again, we're going to try a few things tonight that we haven't done yet. Um, and, and that's how we're doing it. We're, we're gradually putting things in and, and getting better. So in our last minute, let's also talk, you know, region before we know it will be here. How's the region looking right now? Uh, have you even had a chance to look or do you not really pay attention? No, I, I, sh I haven't honestly looked. I, I, I've heard a couple scores. Springville's good. Springville actually got a, they ended up beating Real, but I think yeah. <laughs> as I, as I was told, Real was missing three or four other guys. That, that's always the case, right? Springville will be good. Salem yep. Hills, I think is really good. Um, all of those teams are, are it's, it's going to be a tough region. It's not going to be an Always easy tough. night, but I, but I honestly don't know what their record is yet. I haven't looked at those games yet. Okay. Um, so, but I will. It looks like you won't see them until January. Correct. And right. so, uh, all right, well, I guess you have plenty of time to take it on the chin a few times and, and beat a few people up yourself. So James yeah. Ball said, we appreciate you so much joining us here and uh, best of luck this weekend. And we'll talk with you again, I'm sure next week. Great. Thank you so much for having me. Brent, thank you so much. And Coach Ball said, we appreciate you taking the time. Now, when we come back on the scoreboard, we're going to be catching up with Trey Pace, who could be our athlete of the week here in a couple of days. He is shooting the lights out of every gym he enters. 23 points a game, scored 34 over the weekend with a nice double-double to, uh, to uh, accompany that. We're going to be catching up with him here on the scoreboard when we come back. Don't go anywhere.
Hi guys, I'm Janet the Dairy King. We're famous here for our ice cream. We have 84 different kinds of shapes. We also have some amazing food. So come and try our chicken strips, our fish and chips dinners, our burgers, our fries, our sweet potato fries. Oh my gosh, we've got so much. Once you go over to the Heber Valley Railroad and ride their train, then of course you have to come here and see all of our trains. Our family serving your family since 1946. We hope to see you soon here at the Dairy King. Hey everybody, welcome back to the scoreboard. I am your host, Brigham Harris. Now, Blake O'Rulian, our field reporter, got to catch up with Trey Pace out at North Summit High School. He got to sit down with him at the gym in Colville. Talk about the 23 points per game. What, what is happening up there in Colville? Young Trey Pace doing a great job, really carrying his team. Not only the number one scorer when it comes to the 2A classification in Utah, but he's six, seven, top 10 scorer in the entire state. So we're gonna catch up with him. Blake is sitting down with Trey. Trey, thank you so much for sitting down with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. So I, I, I don't know if you know this, but I mean, we've been doing our research on you. You are, you have the most points total this season. You played a few more games than some other teams, um, but you are the number six scorer in all of Utah and the number one scorer in your division. How does that make you feel, knowing that you're just scoring the ball at an insane rate right now? It's, it's nice to see the hard work, you know, I put in pay off, you know, and it, you know, I struggled at the start, but now I'm starting to, to get going so it's nice to see it start paying off Let, let's talk about that a little bit so so you say that you struggled at the start what what do you mean by that what so what did you struggle with like a lot of these teams they do been doing a box and one so they'll have four guys and then one guy strictly on me and I was uncomfortable you know having the ball in my hands and you know talking with my dad and he you know I got to have the ball in my hands and you know go to work so it's definitely helped me to be able to like feel more comfortable on the court and you know, just playing all these games, I've finally got my rhythm going, so. Has your dad always kind of been your mentor in basketball? Oh yeah, 100%. Yeah, always been your coach? Yeah, he, he'll point out things, like the littlest things, like even in my shot, that I wouldn't even think of, you know, fixing. And yeah, he's for sure my biggest mentor. He's absolutely, it's, it's. have you ever had to play a game without him there or anything like that? And um, if so, has it been difficult without him? Yeah, I mean, yeah. The games, you know, when like at the camps and stuff, he's not there. And always after the games, I'll go and talk to him and be like, you know, do I need to fix this, this, and this? But when he's not there, yeah, it definitely plays a role. And last thing about your dad, did he also play basketball yeah. growing up? Did yeah. he put up numbers like you, or are you a lot better than him? Uh, yeah, I would say I'm probably better than him. <laughs> I, I can jump higher than him. He said in high school he could dunk a tennis ball, but I definitely have him beat on. But you're dunking basketballs, yeah, right? I, yeah, I'm a little <laughs> bit more athletic than him. So you said in your last game, your last game you had three dunks? Two. I had two in one game, one in the other. All right. And have you been able to have a big dunk in front of the student section here at North Summit? Yeah. La last year, let's see, it the Morgan game. Okay. And it was it was our last game before we went to state, and it was an out of bounds play right there, and alley ooped to me and got it. And uh, how crazy did the student section it, go? It was it was pretty cool. It must have been nuts, huh? Yeah. It's, it's a it's a experience there and feeling you can't explain. Is that more of a natural thing for you, or, or have you really had to work on your vertical to get to be able to uh, dunk? See, I, I still remember in seventh grade, you know, I, I could jump higher than the rest of the kids, but I still remember I was outside and I said I want I want to touch the rim. And so me and my little sister Addie we put on ankle weights, and so I just started jumping and then I'll take them off and try that, and yeah, I've just been working ever since. Oh man, so you mentioned, you know, you've played basketball your whole life. Yeah. This is probably a huge part of your life, is that correct? I mean, 34 points and 35 points over the span of eight days is pretty impressive for a high school basketball player. Um, what kind of zone do you have to get into? Like, what are you thinking during the game when you're just draining shot after shot and you're scoring this much at yeah. such an efficient level? Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm the only guy on our team that's, you know, played varsity minutes. And so when I when I score, I know my team is you know they're they're looking at me to be a leader, and so yeah, it, it definitely you know they're looking at me to lead this team. And when once you once you make your first couple points, it's easy to just get going and so, stuff. Just get so, the ball rolling. Yeah. What what's like your favorite shot to hit? Do you like post moves? Do you like pulling up from mid range? Are you a deep three? Guy? Uh, I like getting to the rim. Okay. I like getting to the rim. Nice layup package. Yeah. All that stuff. Who's your favorite player growing up? Uh, I ne I always so I'm a I'm a Duke fan. Oh, okay. So I watch Duke, but I really like John Morant. Oh, okay. I be, I I can relate to him a lot. So you are in your third year now on varsity. You mentioned that you have to be a leader. What kind of things um, 
do you notice yourself having to do in order to pick this team up at times? Um, I think, you know, communicating on the court, you know, letting everyone know where they should be and being, you know, a role model for the younger guys to, you know, hopefully follow in my footprints. You're also, not to mention, a leader on the court, off the court, like you just mentioned. You are leading the team in steals, you're leading the team in rebounds. Yeah. You have these hustle stats. Are you, when you're on the court, it just seems like you own this court and you are playing to the best of your abilities. What, what gave you that kind of mentality when you play? Because it seems like you just take over games. Yeah, I, I think it's just, you know, I don't, it's just in me. You know, and, and I think every time I step on the court, I, it's in me to be the best player out there. I don't want anyone beating me. And so I always try to outwork them. Even if my shot's not falling, then I'll try and pick it up on the defensive end and I'll just try and find ways to, you know, get going. Right, those rebounds, those steals, that's, that's those hustle stats. Instead of, you know, the points are pretty, but the steals and the rebounds don't come without. And that, you know, my coach easy. always says, like, if your shots aren't falling, get on defense and, you know, it'll light a fire under you and you'll get going. Absolutely. So, coming into this season, so you're kind of kicking off the season right now. What does this team need to do to really make a move towards leading the region, you know, coming out and, you know, having a very successful postseason run yeah. if possible? Um, yeah, so our first two games we, we played, I would almost say scared. And I, and I, and I feel like each game we're, we're, you know, getting up there. So I think one thing, you know, that we could probably do is maybe have more players look for shots. I always feel like maybe they're, they're kind of scared to take the shots or, you know, but we're getting there. I think we'll, when it gets to region play, I think we'll, we'll do really well. All right, so you're right at the beginning of the season. You're putting up these types of numbers. You're leading the, the state, or not leading the state, but you're one of the top players in the state. Uh, what's your goal after, after high school? Are you trying to get some college yeah. offers? Are you trying to get some scouts to come look at you? Yeah, for sure. I, I just want to play somewhere. Cause I know I can, and I've and I've had people tell me, you know, you can play, but yeah, I just it's always been a dream to play just somewhere. Well, hey, thank you so much yeah. for your time. Really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thank you so and much. Good luck to you guys. Okay, well, thank you. Blake, Trey, thank you guys so much. We appreciate it. And Trey, good luck to you, man. We got a lot of basketball still to play this season, not only for North and South Summit, but Park City, Wasatch, a lot of exciting things. We're not even in region play yet, and so we are going to be giving you updates, scores, uh, upcoming schedules, all that good stuff right here on the scoreboard. When we come back, we're going to be taking a look at this week in sports, what events we're looking out for, what we're going to be expecting here in the next few days right here on the scoreboard. We'll be right back. Janet the Dairy Queen. We're famous here for our ice cream. We have 84 different kinds of shapes. We also have some amazing food. Our family serving your family since 1946. We hope to see you soon here at the Dairy King. Hey everybody, welcome back to the scoreboard. I am your host, Brigham Harris. Now today we had a episode chock full of basketball. If you're any sort of hoops fan, you can check us out on thescoreboardnation.com, rewatch this or any other episode as we are in the heart of basketball season right now. We're going to keep giving you those updates, scores, schedules, top scorers of the league and these uh, these awesome interviews that we just love sitting down with uh, these athletes and coaches. So we appreciate all those who are uh, helping us out here on the scoreboard. Now, we, again, we appreciate it. Head over to PCTV at 6 and 10 p.m. on Tuesdays and Fridays or always catch us on the scoreboardnation.com. We'll see you next time.